By now, most of us are used to the idea of doing stuff without actually having to touch anything. And while this sadly doesn't work in all public bathrooms, it's become commonplace to do all sorts of stuff like unlocking hotel rooms, traveling on subways, entering our cars, and buying overpriced merch at theme parks just by tapping something or being near it. But this is not Harry Potter style magic, folks. It is all thanks to a technology called RFID. Little chips that somehow make everything smart, at least according to someone's marketing department somewhere. But how does RFID even work? I mean, it's just a tiny chip thing embedded inside a card, right? Where's the battery? Well, most RFID chips called tags, not that kind of tags, actually don't need a battery. Mind blown, right? Because they draw power from whatever happens to be reading them. Run-of-the-mill RFID tags in credit cards and wristbands are classified as passive and only consist of a tiny antenna, an embedded CPU to process radio waves, and a small amount of data storage. They're small and low power enough to just <laughs> grab energy from a powered chip reader, making them convenient enough to use just about anywhere. Wait a second, Linus. Anywhere? Are we gonna start seeing terabyte-sized RFID tags that can replace my trusty mechanical hard drive? Well, no. To keep power consumption low enough that they can be powered by radio waves, and to keep costs down so we can put them everywhere, RFID tags hold only a few kilobytes of data. Which is fine, because in today's connected world, you don't need more than a few kilobytes of storage for the RFID chip to be an incredibly useful tool. No, but really though, along with the useful things that can be done with a few kilobytes, uh, paperless ticketing for events, and Apple Pay, which use NFC, a two-way short-range form of RFID, come to mind. Thanks to many RFID readers, like your cell phone for example, having their own network connections, RFID chips are often simply used as pointers to more information or more complex functionality somewhere else. Cool, right? Entertainment venues often offer RFID kiosks to auto check in on Facebook or auto tweet that you're too lazy to take your phone out of your pocket. Cars have RFID tags that can help you recover them if someone decides to jack your ride. Casinos have RFID chips in their chips to help people from pulling an Ocean's Eleven and you can even have a tag attached to your dog to find him if he decides to run away because you spent all night playing Counter-Strike and forgot to feed the poor soul. And because RFID is such a customizable technology, many uses for it have most likely not even been fully realized yet. I mean, imagine RFID tags replacing barcodes on everything you purchase so you can just walk out of the store with all your new stuff and an RFID scanner will read your tags and credit card to automatically bill you. No checkout lines required. Mind blown again, right? I mean, there's even a number of projects around smart dust. RFID transmitters about a cubic millimeter in size that could do everything from analyze traffic patterns after being mixed into asphalt to keeping tabs on your stuff whenever it's taken out of your home so you know if it's been stolen to flowing through your bloodstream to monitor the state of your health. I mean, whoa, hold on a second there, Linus. Let's just back this up. What if I don't want to eat RFID pixie dust or have every single thing I buy tracked? That sounds like some kind of 1984 nightmare. And yeah, I hear that, guys. We actually have some tough questions to answer as a society about how much privacy we want to trade for automation and convenience, which is the downside of RFID technology and where it's heading right now. Unless, of course, you're into being watched. Speaking of watching, watch this! Here's a sponsorship spot. With a lynda.com membership, you can watch videos and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching. What can you learn, Linus? Great question. They've got thousands of video courses on demand, allowing you to learn at your own schedule and at your own pace and create playlists, which isn't an answer to that question at all, because I'm going to answer it now. Whether it's digital photography or business or, you know, productivity software or video editing, lynda.com lets you take your hobbies or your career to the next level 
with just a simple monthly payment. And the best part about it is that you can try it now for free. You can actually get 10 days of allyoucaneatlinda.com, allowing you to download to your mobile device and watch in the, on the bus without using your data or take notes or share your playlist with other people so they can follow along. You can learn the same things. Programming's another one. All kinds of great stuff. Visit lynda.com slash techquickie to sign up for your free 10 day trial. And after that, rates start at only 20 $25 a month, which is a small price to pay to invest in your most valuable resource, which is you. Well, for me, it's me, so I pointed at me, but for you, it's you, so bam. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future fast as possible videos. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow. If you're looking for something else to watch, guys, we just did a really cool video over on Linus Tech Tips with like an ultimate gaming rig with four GTX Titan Axis. So you can go uh, check that out in the little eye in the corner if you're watching on YouTube.